now, where we cover breaking news in the tech industry every day. In today's news, Elon Musk's brain implant company, Neuralink, has received regulatory approval to conduct its first clinical trial of an experimental device in humans. However, concerns have been raised about Musk's leadership, the scope of Neuralink's promises, and animal welfare issues related to the company's experiments. Neuralink, founded in 2016, has developed a brain-computer interface, BCI, called the Link, which is an electrode-laden computer chip that can be implanted on the surface of the brain and connected to external electronics. Musk has made ambitious claims about the therapeutic potentials of Neuralink's device, suggesting it could be used to treat conditions like blindness, paralysis, and depression. He also expressed a long-term vision of creating a general population device that connects the human mind directly to supercomputers and can store thoughts. The FDA approval for clinical trial represents a significant milestone for Neuralink, but details about the study's scope, focus, and design remain unclear. The company's website indicates that it is seeking participants with cognitions such as paralysis, blindness, deafness, or speech impairment. There are concerns about Musk's leadership style and whether Neuralink is equipped to responsibly oversee the development of an invasive medical device that reads brain signals. Musk's track record at other companies such as Twitter raises questions about how he'll approach the ethical considerations surrounding a brain implant device. Furthermore, Neuralink has faced allegations of animal cruelty and botched operations. The company has reportedly killed over 1,500 animals since 2018, and former employees have described experiments as hack jobs. The mortality rate amongst animal test subjects has been attributed to Musk's demanding development timeline, which allegedly led to more mistakes and errors. Neuralink's testing practices and allegations of animal abuse have prompted investigation by multiple government agencies, including the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Transportation. The FDA approval is seen as a positive step for Neuralink, but experts caution that it could still be a long road before the company's product reaches consumers. Clinical research will need to demonstrate the safety and efficacy of the implant, followed by additional trials before seeking FDA approval for commercial marketing. The complexity of addressing specific medical conditions through brain implants requires careful consideration and respect for the individuals being helped. While Neuralink is not the only company working on brain interface devices, Musk's charismatic marketing sets it apart from others. Most public institutions and research teams in the field have focused on using BCIs to treat specific medical conditions rather than aiming for broad application. This has been your Daily Tech News, and please subscribe and come back. Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That is to say, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, a so-called black man. Esau getting ready. Esau is getting ready. Esau is getting ready to put together his army to go up against Yahweh Shai when he returns. And, you know, he's basically taking no prisoners. You know, he's going to get as many as he can. Okay? And this BCI, or Brain Computer Interface, is going to work miracles in both ways that it's going to show that it can, what? cure blindness, uh, paralysis, and whatever else illness, and also upgrade the regular human to a superhuman, where it can download things at the blink of an eye, and it can work all type of miracles, pursuant to Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, around the ninth verse. Let's go there and come back. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9. And it reads, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And this is what you're seeing. You're seeing Esau, you know, getting ready. Getting ready to go to war. You know, he ain't gonna win, but so prophecy can be fulfilled he has to have the illusion that he has a fighting chance you know and this bci this brain computer interface is going to get a lot of people to come to war you know uh that's how he's <laughs> this is this is basically his draft. You you witnessing the draft getting ready to come because a lot of people aren't gonna willingly 
want to sign up for a draft, but you get it once they take this BCI, you know, this this mark in their forehead or in their right hand, they're pretty much going to wave over all their intellectual properties where they can make, you know, cognitive uh, decisions on their own because they're going to be taken over. Their soul is going to be completely given over to Esau. Once they put this thing inside them, that's it for them. They're not going to be able to make any more decisions on their own. They're going to be told what to do. So they're going to come up against Yahawashai, you know, once he returned. So Esau right now is putting together the works, the, the structure of his army to, to come up against Yahawashai when he returns. Because he know people aren't just going to voluntarily come on their own and sign up for the draft. So he's going to have to deceive them and get them to take something where he then can take over their mind and have them do what he want them to do. So they're going to be under, well, they're going to be controlled. It's basically, they're going to fulfill prophecy because they're going to come up against Yahawashai, you know? And this is Joel 3. And uh, let's go down to verse 12. And it reads, Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. And you see the wickedness being compound on interest on a daily, you know, from the alphabet community to, you know, all types of abominable acts you see in Social, you're seeing through social media and mainstream media, you're seeing all these types of access going on. It's just sin being built and built. So the sickle, you know, is ripe for the harvest. So it says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. And that's what you're seeing. <laughs> you're seeing Esau getting ready right now, you know, putting together his army. Because it's not you, per se, that has a fighting chance. It's going to be, once he put this device inside you, he's going to take over all your bodily functions. And in order for him to get you to buy into that, he has to first, you know, show signs and lie in wonders. How magnificent, how magnificent this, this device can, you know, save the lives of, you know, parallel, uh, not parallel, but paralyzed human beings, you know, who can't walk, now they can walk, who can't see, now they can see. You know, he's playing the role of, of the Most High, Yahweh, with his technology, you know? <laughs> this man is, is is pompous, man. He's on his high horse. He think he, think he is the Most High. So what? He's going to have this brain-computer interface where once you put that inside your your noggin, you now are under his control, and you're gonna be opposition towards the Most High, and you're gonna come up against his son Yahushai, and you're gonna you're gonna get what you get, you know. So let's go to uh, Saint Mark eight and thirty six. And it reads, for what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world? Okay, so let's say you took this mark. Now you gain the whole world. You got all the knowledge of this world. You know, you can read. You can download things at an impeccable pace. You now, if you were paralyzed, you can walk again. You can do all these wonders. For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world? Now you done lost your soul because you don't let something else take over your thought process, your mind, your body, everything. You know, if you think Esau really is going to allow you to take his technology and that's going to be it, you got some, you sadly mistaken, man. This man doesn't play fair. He's, he's, su he's subtle. He's that serpent, you know. This is how he gets down. He's not telling you the end game. 
He's just allowing you to see just enough for you to bite whatever he's throwing out there to cast. So by you taking this, you actually are signing your own death certificate, man. Okay? This is how this man gets down, man. He, he, he's letting you come to your own demise. But ultimately, it's because it was written. And you playing your part, your role. You know, so this man is drafting his army right now. And you seeing it in your own, you seeing it with your own two eyes. He's using cunnery, you know, deceitfulness. And he's hiding behind the, the facade of something that's beneficial to the people. You know, this is how he's going to draft his army, man. <laughs> He's getting ready to put together his army of superhumans to come up against Yahweh Shah, which they ain't going to win. But so prophecy can be fulfilled, this has to happen. It has to be a certain amount of people that's going to receive this. Okay, this is what's going to take place. So this man is building up his army under, uh, under the guise of a brain computer interface that can be beneficial for society and help those who are less fortunate to become more, you know, productive, to have a, you know, a, a certain lifestyle, you know, a certain uh, style of living, you know, that's, co that's comparable to, you know, a standard of living, which is you know, being able to walk on your own, that's how you're going to believe. Talk on your own, see on your own. <laughs> Basically, he's using you as a conduit to bring forth his demise. You know? And you Israelites who take this, you so-called Native Americans, Blacks, and Latinos, you know, I mean, <laughs> you pretty much finish. Now you gonna come back in the kingdom, but that's a hell of a way to go out. You know, in Saint Mark, let's uh, let's go there in the fifth chapter. When that demon acts to be uh, put in forth, that legion of them legion of demons acts to be put in forth swine, so that they can roll down into the sea and get drowned and they was cast out the man <laughs> well the only way that chip is going you know that mark is going to be cast out of you is you're going to get purified through them through that missile through the you know through the nuclear missiles that's coming for uh babylon the great you know and then you can get that wicked demon out of you and you can come back in the kingdom, you know, as a newborn. So this is uh, St. Mark 5, and let's read verse 3, uh, verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. And that's what's going to be in you once you take that mark and put it inside you. You're going to have an unclean spirit because it's going to be taking over your body and doing whatever it wants to do. Three, uh, verse three, who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could buy him. No, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the feathers broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw, but when he saw Yahweh far off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, "What have I to do with thee, Yahweh the Son of the Most High, Yahweh? I adore you, I, Slakia, <clears throat> I adore thee by the Most High." that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And when he and he asked him, What is thy name? He answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send 
them away out of the country. Now there was now there was their nine to the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. Twelve, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine, send us unto the swine, that we may enter into them. And forwith Yahweh shall gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered to the swine, and the herd went violently down the sea place into the sea. There were about two thousand were choked in the sea. You see? <laughs> so once this gets inside you, you're going to be that conduit. You're going to be that swine, that filthy, abominable animal. And the only way you're going to get that thing up out of you is you got to be taken out by nuclear missiles. That represent that, that, represent that what? That represents that sea, that water. That you're gonna get baptized in itself is gonna be fire. It's gonna be thermonuclear missiles coming to cleanse this land, America, Babylon the Great. Then you can get reborn into the kingdom and come back a new creature. But as of right now, once you take that, you're gonna be that conduit, that swine, you know? And <laughs> that's how you're gonna play along with Esau. You know, so you getting ready to be drafted into this man's army to go to come up against your Howard shot, man. And these human trials are coming. They on their way because at first the FDA was giving pushback. So they was, you know, playing like they was giving pushback. We, we all knew prophecy had to be fulfilled. So they turned around and said, OK, now you can conduct human trials for these BCIs, these uh, brain computer interface. So now that he has approval, that now that he has approval for the FDA, he can see just what these trials can, you know, bring forth in these humans. Because he's seen how they worked on animals, you know, monkeys and pigs and whatnot. Now the FDA has approved to begin human trials, and it's not just Musk. It's I think Blackstone is another contender for brain computer interface. Uh, trials so they seeing who has the best technology so once they get ready to roll this thing out they can have the best company present to them what BCI brain computer interface you know has the best reward to risk ratio what can we get more from this company that we can't that we uh, can't from the other you know so this is all you know, going hand in hand, you know, but essentially it's leading to the ultimate decision and that's drafting his army because on their own, people are not going to want to come up and sign and fight for the, you know, fight for this military. But with this BCI taking over your thoughts, you know, you're going <laughs> to fight whether you want it or not. Because you're going to be under the illusion that you're making the decisions. Just like these people who take this believe that they are using their brain to think and have this device control whatever element it is that they want. Whether it's moving a mouse, whether it's moving their leg, their hand, whatever. They're going to be under the impression that their mind is controlling that. All the while, that's, the, that's, the, that's far from the truth. It's, it's the control of Esau, Edom, the so-called Caucasian that's controlling their mind, thoughts, and everything else. And that's what's going to happen once they put that thing in them. They're going to be property of Esau. And he's going to use them to come up against Yahawashai in the battle, the battle of Armageddon, spoken of in Revelation, the 16th chapter. So you see, there's nothing that this man's going to give to you that's going to benefit you in the long run. He's just selling you a pipe dream, you know. He's telling you that this thing is good for you, but he's not telling you at what cost that does it come that you have to pay for it with. And that's your soul. So that's why it says in Mark, the eighth chapter, the 36th verse. For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? 
it's not going to profit you nothing but a one-way trip to, you know, to the lake of fire, which is going to be here in America, Babylon, when those missiles come to cleanse this place. And it says, a wish they man give in exchange for his soul. You know, you give it, you giving away all your cognitive functions just so you can have this man device inside you so you can believe that you are going to live a better standard of life. Who served the third fort? 38. Who served the fort should be ashamed of me and of my words? And this adulterous and sinful generation of him also should the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glorious father with the holy angels. And he's not going to have no pity on you. He's not going to see you as, you know, one of his. Because you don't took this man to vice. Property of Esau, Edom. Triple six. You know? You didn't have faith. You, didn't, you, you couldn't hold out. You took this man... Uh, Signs and lying your wonders, his his you know his work. <clears throat> you took his device and you put it inside you, showing showing him that he's your God. You know, and with that being said, there goes your hedge. Only way you're gonna get cleansed now is you're gonna have to go through that lake of fire. Perish tells you the wages of sin is death. I did a video on that. Romans, the wages of sin and death, that second death is the lake of fire. And then you get to come back in the kingdom as a newborn. You know? So we're going to wrap it up and go to First Peter and, and uh, close, it, close it out from there. This is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, and it reads, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And if he can get you and draft you into his war for the second coming of, for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, by all means necessary, he going to get you. Once you put that device inside you, you signed up for his army, his military, to come up against Yahweh Shai when he comes back. You know, in the battle of Armageddon, spoken of in Revelation 16 chapter, you're going to be part of that army, whether you like it or not, because you're going to no longer have control over your body. He's going to be controlling you against your own will. But at first, he's going to allow you to think that you have free will, that you are able to manipulate and control your bodily fluids and your, and your you know, <laughs> everything. This man is going to give you that sense of, you know, independency. If you don't have it, he's going to offer it to you. Now you can walk again. Now you can talk. Now you can see. All these are going to be signs and lying wonders. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this is what he's going to offer you or present to you to have you to sign up for the draft. Just like when you go to the military, they offer you certain incentives, bonuses, and whatnot to get you to sign up for their military, whatever branch it may be, the Army, the Navy, uh, you know, what else they have, the Marines. This is how this man is going to incentivize you. These are his incentives to get you to sign up for his draft, for his military. And once you take that, you just sign your name on his sheet to join his army whether you like it or not so that's why you have to be sober and be vigilant in these times and know exactly what's going on you know so with that being said stay strong stay in the faith we almost home shalom